Okay. Right. Thank you so much for joining us today. The final of the final, my own final section for this particular PGD on procurement supply chain management training. And I want to seize this opportunity to express my gratitude to the 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 chairman, the president of this um organization. I want to say thank you so much. Let me mention the organization if I can, so that they will know the platform I'm working on, on which is Prestige Grosser Consulting Firm. PCCF. And I want to say thank you so much, sir, Dr. Lonson Tom, for uh, trusting me to come and share on this platform and also to learn from yours as well as other speakers. I want to also express my gratitude to all our learners, our scholars our great leaders and entrepreneurs and businessmen and women. Thank you so much for joining this organization to learn so that you can move your business forward to the next level. Knowledge is powerful. Whatever you are learning now will help you to be successful in what you are doing. And I want to believe that when we learn and have a better understanding, then we can apply what we've been learning since the beginning of this program. When you get a better understanding, you can apply it. And it is when you apply all these principles and strategies and management as, as sections, then you will be able to progress and move your business to the next level. And we are talking about procurement, supply chain management training. Okay, you all know who I am. I'm also Dr. Elizabeth Lucas Afolalu, the founder of Yes You Can International here in UK and is even worldwide. And what do we do? We engage the mindset of our youth, our children, women, and also the younger leaders in the world. We also, we have so many books that we've written and they are all available at amazon.com, including my own, which is on mindset, relationship, Yes, you can. The love that we can reconnect. And also some books from my husband, which is the wisdom book and mindset and many, many more books, especially the relationship. So we've been talking about procurement and I've dealt with it and I've also learned from other trainers. So just to recap quickly, Procurements involve every activities in obtaining the goods and services a company needs to support its daily operations, including sourcing, negotiating terms, purchasing items, receiving and inspecting goods that are necessary and also keeping records of all the steps in the process. So that is our procurement section or department, or even anyone that is having a role in that particular, in that department are very, very important to the organization. And we also recollect, especially on on 7th and the 8th of this month, when we also talk about the five P's of procurement. It involves the power, the authority, 
it involves the people and how we're processing it, the planning, and also the prevention. And I know we've already dealt with those ones right from the beginning. But let me just say this, that power refers to the influence and the authority of the procurement team within a company. They, whatever they're doing influences the company. So, and that is how powerful they are and that department as well. So what are the four pillars of strategic sources? Remember, today we are gonna be talking about outsources and global sources. A strategic sources function is necessary for today's dynamic businesses, especially in these terms of uh, modernization and technology and a new change in the society. So there are four pillars of strategy sources that we need to look into. And that is the analysis of our spending. Very, very important. How are we managing the resources and the funding in your business? How are you? Then the sourcing. How are we going to, you know, how are we going to plan? Who are we going to source our this thing, you know? How are we going to involve other organizations for us to be able to produce or to deliver our own services? How are we going to do that? Because in this term, in the olden days, a company can do everything. But as time goes on now, Things have changed that sometimes we don't need to stick on it and just doing it. It wasted times, I've wasted resources. And that is why sources is also very important and is also the pillars of strategic source. We also talk about the contracts management. How are you managing the contractors? And then the suppliers as well. So these are the four pillars of strategies when we are talking about building and expanding our business and also crossing the barrier. So what are the three main elements of a sourcing plan then? We've talked about the strategy. Now we want to talk about what are the key areas that we as a manager or director or even as the procure, uh, uh, pro, pro, uh, procurement <laughs> leaders. So what are the elements that we need to be looking in while we are processing this plan? The first thing first, a company needs to identify opportunity. They also need to specify their own needs and analyze it. And they also need to analyze the strategy. Because there's no point you want to outsource and you haven't done your own part, which is very important. So let me say it again. The three steps that we need to take. Opportunity surrounds us, but we need to identify it. And we also need to specify what do we need to do the, I mean, what do we need to, to, do, to provide, to produce our own product? We don't need everything. So we need to be specific. And then the next one is strategic analytics. We need to look at, okay, how are we going to, Go to, market to share imply this? Okay. So now down makes me to now come to my topic of today. Outsourcing. 
Outsourcing is when a company hires a third party to perform their tax. In other words, when a company employs another company to fulfilling its tax, it is termed outsourcing. Let me give an example. As an entrepreneur myself and as a businesswoman, when I used to have my, I mean, I have different businesses, but there's one particular one that I, I was doing the printing side, the promotional and marketing products. I knew that our own machine is out of, you know, that is old and it needs to be replaced. And when my manager, we sat down together, we talked about it, we researched the price, we tried to, you know, we now realize that do we really have time like before? Because now we've moved, we've been busy, we have so many customers. And then we suggested maybe we can outsource the, the production to somebody else to be doing for us. And maybe we need another section, another company to repackage it for us. And that's where this outsourcing comes about in the company. Because sometimes when you first started as a sole trader, you are everything. You manage the money, you manage everything, every sources, production, how to take care of your company, how to take care of your staffs, everything. But in the time goes on when you are in, when you are when you are doing well and you are moving, you are making a lot, there's time for you to just let go of some some pro I mean some activities and let others take over that. And believe it or not, when we now outsource our printing and our repackaging out, we had enough time to focus on other things in the company. That is how important it is to outsource. Outsourcing is the business practice of hiring a part party outside the company to perform services or create goods that were traditionally performed in-house. But like I just explained to you, I remember when I was working with another organization and they were in control of their human resources before. But it comes to a stage in, in lives, in, you know, that they can't undo that anymore. Things are changing and it's changing fast. They have no, you know, they have no choice than to outsource their human resources out to another company to take care of that while they focus on the main thing, main service and their production in the house. So what is outsizing an example then? Outsourcing involves bringing in outside resource like a firm or independent contractor to help with various business function, day-to-day -day tax, or other essential services. The most common outsourcing business example is including marketing. You don't have to do the marketing and advising and advertising. You can outsource that one out while you still focus on your own delivery, your own products your own delivery of service because as the business as the company is growing so also you need to expand and also to draw from everything that you need to get from outside let me also say that sometimes as well we can say we are um, we are borrowing other people's skills 
our resources, all their perform their, their activities. We are borrowing. Because you know why? We are growing. So one of the why one of the reasons why we need to outsource, I'll tell you now. Few. We have the risk management, we have the cost saving. Oh yes, I can tell I can testify to that. You have space management, yes. You have improved quality. Like I said, you will focus on what you are producing and the service you are delivering. Cost restructuring and then focus on core business. I just said it in a simple way. And then scalability. The but one the one out of this that I've said, I've said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me repeat it again. The risk management. I mean, I'm talking about why are we need to, why we do we need to outsource? Why outsourcing? Why? If we can do it all under one umbrella. And these are the reasons. Risk management, cost saving, space management, improved quality, cost constructioning, focus on core business, scalability. These are all the reasons. I will also give you an example. Here in UK, especially in London, there's no space. So people have to learn, you know, you can't, you can't be by yourself alone. Firstly, it's so costly to rent an office. Why do I say I have to rent? I mean, I don't have to rent an office. I have to outsource my, my premises to others. So that means another company is handling my, my information, my correspondence, especially between myself, between the, um, the government and also the company house. They suck that one themselves. They just give, send me the copies. This is what we're talking about. So I don't need to worry about that. Also, it's safe. I'll tell you something. When it comes to human resources, you pay your tax. You also pay tax on behalf of your employees. You pay their national insurance. You have to contribute to that. But then why, when another company is taking care of your human resources, it saves money. It also saves space because you are not looking for, you are not looking for uh, um, facilities for your employee on that area because other people are handling that area section for you and like I said before it makes you to focus on your core business it makes you to focus and when you focus you do well you perform well you deliver you produce quality that is why it is very important. We're going to move on. What is our source in business in UK? For example, because I live here, is that when a company subtracts some of its work to another organization that specifies it in those tax, it is called outsourcing. This may be design. You can, you know, it may be design. It might be production. It might be supply sales. It might be marketing or services. For example, when I publish my book, I source it to uh, Amazon to print it out and also to package it and send it to the, uh, the customer. That is outsourcing. So I don't need to worry about that. My own is to make sure that everything is done. Then I send and I list my product on Amazon. That is, that is what we are expressing in this place. So what is the most common used method of outsourcing then? Services for administration and support, information technology, 
IT. You can get somebody else to do that for you. Human resources, like I've explained to you earlier. Manufacturing and production outsourcing. You don't have to produce because now that I cannot produce because I have another organization before called Elizabeth Creation. I do all my production. But as that goes on that I can't produce myself. So I have to outsource it out because there's so many things I'm doing. Now, imagine me producing, printing, publishing, writing. <laughs> I also teach it. I will just break down one day. <laughs> so that's why I have to assource them out. Then creative and marketing services. Yes, it's one thing for you to produce your product. It's another thing for you to, to outsource it to the market section where they'll be able to, I mean, that is their job. You know, they are specialists, specialized on that. They are experts. So why don't you take your product and send it to them for them to market it in a very good, scalable and quality for you. And also reach out to millions out there. Because while you are still busy producing, you won't have enough time to reach out to millions. And then there is another organization that's their job, marketing. Oh yes, financial and accounting outsourcing. I think that is very, very important. Imagine me sitting down doing all the calculations. The time is going. That is why it is so important. And then the finally, the thought. You need to learn and borrow other people's thought. That is why we network together. That is why we go for training. That is why we, we connect together. That's why we collaborate so that we can learn from one another. Yes, you can internationalize collaborating with PCCF and others. So we learn from one another. We borrow ideas. So that is the main common use method of our sourcing. Another thing also that I need to talk about, yes, outsourcing is good. It can be within your locality. It can be within your country, nationally. What about if I tell you that you can also go, you can go beyond that. And that's what we call global sourcing. I know everybody is talking about global, global, global now. Yeah. Because it's very, very important. And it help us in the long run. Let me give you in a simple way. If I outsource my business within the UK, I mean, the money I will charge them will be in pounds sterling. If I outsource it to maybe Portugal or maybe in uh, India or even in Africa, um, the much I will pay, spend for that will be lesser. That is why global sourcing is very important. Global sourcing is a procurement strategy in which a business buys goods and services from international markets across geographic political boundaries to save money by using cheap materials or skilled labor from low cost country. I believe some of you here are entrepreneurs and businessmen and women. And I believe you will agree with me that you this is not your first time of hearing something like global. Because I want to believe that, especially you are in Nigeria now, you can get an idea. And then that idea, by the time you write it down and plan towards it, I'm sure when the funding comes, the next thing you want to say is, that, oh, I would like this thing to be, you know, to be produced in another country, most especially India and China. So we are not new to this. 
And that is how unique global sourcing is about. Global sourcing, young companies using an outsourced solution is becoming increasingly common. Oh, yes, especially for young companies, especially for young businesses, organizations. When I say young, I mean the business that started within two years, three years, four years, or even 10 years. They often use IPOs as an agent to source from countries with lower costs. What is IPOs stand for? It is International Procurement Organization. So you are not new to all this. So we are just trying to remind you, or even if you are new, just to let you know that you are not alone in your business, in your company, in your organization. You can spread your wings. Digital platforms and online marketplaces are playing an increasingly pivotal role in global sourcing, enabling companies to connect with suppliers and manage procurement processing more efficiently. Remember, I just explained to you about my books. I don't need to worry about printing them. I don't need to worry about customers. I don't need to worry how my books can come across the customers. I don't need to worry. Yes, they will charge me. Like, for example, all my books are on Amazon platforms. Yes, they will charge me. But at the same time, it, it gives me stress-free. It also creates enough time for me to do another thing. It also reduces the tension. And that's how powerful it is. IPOs find and develop important suppliers across a wide range of sourcing category. In fact, they can source from small and simple economy, such as bellers, to large and complex ones, like India, Brazil, or China, or even Africa. Which is very important. So what are the four levels of global sources then? Domestic purchasing only. International purchase made on a needed basis. Sourcing strategy that includes global purchasing. And centralizing coordinated purchase across global solutions. I'm sorry because of time, I won't be able to elaborate this, but at least... These are the points that you yourself, you can research and learn more about it. Because one hour is not enough. I mean, yes, one hour is not enough on this. But I can give you the points and you can work on it. And I think that makes me sometimes elect a university lecturer because university lecturers will not give you everything. They just give you some points, summarize it, and ask you to go and research. Because the more you research and study it, the more you will get a better understanding. So what are the seven steps in the sourcing process? What are the seven steps for, procure, for anyone working in a procurement uh, section? Or even if you are not working there, if your business is small, you also need to get these ideas because you are not aiming that your business will stand still. You are aiming that one day we come, your business will grow from one level to another level. Your organization will grow. So step one is define the spend category. You need to define it. Number two, supply market research. So firstly, you need to design and define it. And then you need to have research. Probably you need to delegate that to one particular staff. 
for the person to go and research because all of us cannot research at the same time. There's so much to be done in organization. And then we need to create a sourcing strategy. Remember when we first started, I also share few points on that. Then you need to choose potential vendor that you want to use, that you want to contact. And selecting a vendor is one thing. Negotiating terms. Don't just say yes, 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 yes. No. You need to negotiate. So even when they come up to say, yes, your, your cost is going to be maybe 5000 Don't just say, okay, 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 I'll pay it. No. Do you know that if you are a good person that can negotiate, you can negotiate from 5000 to 2000 Oh, yes. So that's why you need to have somebody that has that good skills to fill that role. And then executive and integrate. You need to execute it, execute, execute it and also integrate. That means you have to carry it or you have to take action. And at the same time, you also need to integrate. That means you don't just use one model. You have to integrate in different stages, different models to make it work. And then you have to track your results at the end. You need to evaluate. Is it working for us? The model we've used, is it suitable for us? Are we gaining from it? Is it, is it the best for the company, for the organization? So you need to come back to the table and re-evaluate it. Okay, so where do we go? Why do we do global sourcing? Same thing as why do you source in the first place? But I will just touch this as well. By sourcing goods and services from different countries, Companies can reduce costs. I've said it before. They can find new suppliers. I mean, some of our organizations here in UK, we can get suppliers from France. We can get it from Poland. We can get it from Germany. So we don't have to just be on our own. I remember there was a problem with the, uh, when we're doing this uh, uh, Brexit, and we have to think about how are we going to tax this. It's very important. So we find new suppliers, because the new suppliers can cost us cheap than within the UK. And access new markets as well, because there are new things coming into the market every day. But it is not without its challenges. Though. So you need to also read more articles on that. As time goes on, we're going to be talking about how can we explore these challenges of global sources and how can we overcome them? Because any situation, any operation, any performance, any initiative, any ideas comes with Challenges comes with pros and cons and also comes with advantages and disadvantages. But you need to know them and how to overcome because there's no problem above that cannot be solved. So most companies choose a global sources strategy because costs are lower abroad either labor costs or raw materials, they are lower. You can imagine me if I want to create something, even though at the moment I'm sourcing it within Europe, but if I decide that I want to go further down, I want to go to India or uh, uh, China, I'm sure it will cost me even low. That's where, maybe you've heard it before, that's where they call cheap labor. Because some people in some car type of the other, some countries really have that cheap labors where they will just pay people cheaply 
to do the job, to manuf especially the manufacturers. So it's very, very important. The terms offshoring means outsourcing with a foreign provider. And the outsourcing means farming out work to a third party supplier and not doing the work in house. So global sourcing definition, like we said, refers to seeking goods and services beyond one's border. Sorry. Uh, can you mute yourself, please? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. According to purchasing and procurement professionals, companies should be able to source both inside, that means your locality, and outside their national borders. They are then subsequently better able to complete it. So you need to balance. And that is why we are talking about outsourcing and we are also talking about global sourcing. So there's difference. What are the examples then? Global sourcing refers to buying the raw materials or components that go into a company's product from around the world, not just from the headquarter country. For example, Starbucks, one of our own um as one of our own restaurants here. Yeah. It's coffee from location like Columbia. You know, so they are sourced within and without, I mean, within and also outside. So let me move for, further down because we need to finish on time. What then is the difference between outsourcing and global sourcing? The difference between sourcing and outsourcing is that sourcing supplies uh, goods and products for running a business. And on the other hand, outsourcing transfer a firm's function to the third providing or external service provider. I would like to repeat that again. What is the difference between sourcing and outsourcing? You can be sourcing things within, but then you can now involve the third party so when you now involve the third party organization or company to do some of your services and provider, that is where outsourcing comes about. Then what is the difference between global sourcing and procurement then? In a nutshell, sourcing is all about finding suppliers for the materials and suppliers for the company. Whereas procurement is about obtaining those supplies to fulfill company's requirements. Sourcing is part of procurement that helps find, vet, and maintain relationship with different suppliers. So you can see that sourcing is very important Procurement is very important and they all have their own part to play in any organization. Remember I said something about global sourcing. I was telling you that there is always pros and cons. There's always advantages and disadvantages. There will always be challenges, but then we can seek a way to overcome those challenges. These are the advantages of global sourcing. You will assess the wide assortment of products that you may be able to find domestically when you go on global. When you go on global sourcing, you can gain access to resources, materials, or skills that you can't find domestically because you can't find everything here such as ability to manufacture a specific types of products. 
thirdly, you can assess the unique hard to find products which can attract more customers if you go global. You can increase your total supply capacity by using multiple suppliers globally or in different regions, which can also protect you against supply chain problems caused by natural disasters. Again, overseas manufacturers generally offer substantial cost savings to compare to sourcing domestically. Also, you can assess when you go global, you can assess the supplies worldwide, which means you have many more options than you have domestically. So you are not stuck. Also, overseas suppliers are often more open to working with small businesses or producing small quantities. Oh, yes. Take, for instance, printing. If you want to print in this country, the more you print, the lesser. So if you want to print like five or ten or something like that, maybe you need to look outside the box and seek out globally. Sourcing overseas is a learning experience as well that can provide a stepping stone to selling a new market overseas. That is why we keep learning and we keep open up to more opportunities. I'm surprised I didn't mention that. Advantages of global sources is also bringing new opportunities to your company. That is advantages. But there is disadvantages as well. So disadvantages of global sources might be you may experience different industrial or technical standard, which may or may not you are your own country requirement. So maybe you need a certain things, but then we have rules, we have customs, we have dues, we have tax. So that can be a limitation. The current exchange rate can fluctuate, yes. For example, the rate of Naira to, to, to uh, the rate of Naira to pounds or the rate of Naira to dollars is fluctuating. I have my agent that always feed me all these figures. Sometimes it goes down, sometimes it goes high. So that can affect your outsourcing globally. Because you are in control of your Naira, but you are not in control of dollar and pounds, styling. Even documentation requirement for cross-border processing may be time-consuming and complicated. Oh, yes. Because you have to go through some, some documentary. You have to go through some stages. So it can time con it can be time consuming. You might be thinking, oh, let me just do it within ourselves and get it done. But then you might be limiting yourself and stay in your comfort zone. But maybe this is one of the things that you now need to time. Because like I said, every challenge has a solution. You can overcome them. So maybe that's the time you now need to see the timely before you set up the process. And the last one could be restriction are in place that may affect import and export at either end of transaction or such as quota and tariffs. So these are the these are the disadvantages of global sources. But I have a good news for you. Do you know that with the little I've said here, we have more advantages than the disadvantages. So that's the good news, that you can still go global sourcing. 
So what are the pros and cons as well for global sourcing? Seeking a global sourcing strategy has many benefits. However, as is the right case, with most business strategies, there are disadvantages there, like I just told you. Now there are pros and cons as well in an, another form. You can learn how to succeed in a new market. So that's how the pros I'm telling, I'm sharing with you now. Your company may find new business contracts and maybe even new customers abroad. I mean, like YYCI is not within the UK alone. We have clients all over the place because we went global. And I could remember before COVID pandemic, I was doing all my business within UK. Traveled a lot within the time and supervising, managing, doing all kind of thing. But things have changed now. And it has opened to new doors, new opportunities. And that's why I'm able to even connect with Dr. Thompson and uh, Dr. Lonsey. Even though because I went global, nobody will know who Elizabeth is. So if you find a new and cheaper supplier as well, you can compete against your rivals more effectively. And also find new suppliers means you become less reliant or just one. Because sometimes you can be disappointed. You may be better able to increase your company's technical capacity as well by doing business abroad. There might also be an opportunity to increase manufacturing capacity. Oh, yes. Maybe you have a small warehouse where you are. And then you are thinking of in increasing, expanding. You might have a massive warehouse that is producing for you in India or China. So what are the cons then? Hidden costs related to the time and effort employees spend learning about different countries are higher. Oh yes, because you, you need to send them for training and that training is in your account, is in their budget. For young companies, especially these hidden costs may be high, so they might not be able to avoid it. Your company runs the risk of having legal problem abroad. So you need to study all this legality before you venture into it. It's good, but you need to prepare. You need to know what you are doing. You need to know the legislation. Doing business abroad may also come with financial and political risks. Oh, yes. In the emerging economies, especially the risks tend to be higher. Your intellectual property is at greater risk when you adopt a global sourcing strategy because global strategy is an open eye. It's the worldwide it's the nation seeing what you are doing so anybody can copy it and duplicate it. So sustainable global sourcing is becoming a key consideration for many companies as companies are not only looking for cost effectiveness, but also aiming to meet environmental and social responsibility standards. What's the time now? I've spent one hour. Should I continue? Let me see. I'm on the last stages of my teaching. So I'm just going to run with it. And this is the last one, which is, what are the 13 stages of procurement? So that is the way I want to round up all the things I have been sharing with you for three days in one way. So what are the 13 stages of procurement? Number one, 
Define the needs of your business. Very important before you go, before you do anything, define the needs of your business. That is where you will have the business plan. That is where you will have the business, the marketing plan, the financial plan. That is where you will now have, I mean, what you are going to do with your human resources, what you want to produce, how you want to produce it, who are your customers, who are your clients, who are your customers, where are they? You need to know all this. So the first step of CIPS here, procurement circle, is to understand your business's needs and opportunities out there. This needs to be clearly laid out before going forward to ensure you are following your plan. So you need to set your goals, plan very well, and everything has to be in line with your visions and your objectives and your mission, your mission statement needs to be clearer for everyone in your company to understand and to work with as a procurement leader. It is critical to involve in numerous different stakeholders within this plan to help you build a bigger, more broad images of what needs to be done. It is critical. So that's why you need to know what you are doing right from the beginning. I guess you've heard this statement where they say that when the foundation is solid, then you can build anything on it. This is the foundation. Define the needs of your business. Know where you are, know where you are going and know Another analysis that you can get to this is the SWOT analysis. You need to know the strength, the weakness, the opportunity and the threats. Because that will help you when you analyze it. We help you to come up with, okay, this is what we need. This is what we want to produce. This is what we want to provide. This is the solution we want to solve. This is the customers we want to meet. This is our, our clients. This is the products. This is where we want to go. This is the level we want to operate. These are all the things that needs to come up within this number one. I might not finish all the 13, but this number one is very important. Tells you where you are going. If you don't know where you're going and you set up your journey, you'll be stuck at the crossroad. But when you know where you are going, there will be ideas flooding in. Have you heard this as well, that once you start a business, then other ideas will come in that you don't know before, but it will hate your, your business, your company. Once you start. So to start, is the, to start the beginning is a good work. Pre proper preparation. So once you define that, because it's okay, sometimes you might even be looking for what you want. You might put emotion into it and you think that is a great idea. It could be a great idea, but is, does this, is this suitable for the needs of your company? Does it relate to what you are going to do or what you want to do? So this is very important. Now I'm just going to fast forward and run it quickly. Market analy analysis, I've said something about that before. Analyzing both your own position and the condition of the marketplace better. Equip to yourself more information. Grow your mindset with the right information and keep researching. Then we have developed the plan. We also have pre-procurement, market test and engagement because those ones also need to be put in place. Then we have developed details, documentation, supplier selections to participate in tender. We also have, when you have selected the appropriate companies to take part, you need to send out 
the formal documentation such as invitation to teach and also to learn to request for quotation. These are all the documents that you need to be aware of. And that is why I said that everyone in procurement and procure procurement section needs to be trained properly to know what they're doing because they are the eye of the business. They are the eye and the mirror of every organization. So I'm not going to go any further because I think also be careful when you are signing the contract. Make sure you read it, you understand it, you ask questions, you clarify what you know before you sign any contracts. You are representing your company and you have to do it right. So for this stage, I want to say a big thank you to Dr. Lonson Tongs. And I also want to give you a few minutes. If you have any questions, you can ask me. I'm not expert in this area, but I've tried my best to share my inspiration and nugget of wisdom for you to have an idea, for you to feed your mindset of what really is expected in this section of procurement supply chain. Thank you for listening to me. And do you have any question? You all went quiet. Hello. Am I still communicating? I'm, am I, I hope I'm not the only one here. Hello, Mr. Samuel, Dr. Lonson, Sister Annie, and Am I missing out something? You are not missing out your, your SMS. Oh, what happened? Everybody just went quiet on me. Have they been sleeping? I only spent one hour. <laughs> <laughs> please, friends, you're free to ask questions, please. Oh, is it because it's uh, too Mama, late for you? <laughs> no, no, no. This is the best time for us here. Okay. And I uh, thank you for joining. At least uh, many people joined today. Thank you very much. Ma. Okay, sir. Mr. Samuel. Okay. Thank you very much, yes, sir. thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other person? Do you want any any question? Please. I didn't see anybody writing anything on our chat box today. Uh, sometimes I can. I think I, I asked my what are you calling me? Any question? Okay, I believe there's no question. Okay. Well, if you have questions, you have the expert on your platform. I can also. Good evening, ah, Sister Glory Lonson. Good evening, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I just I really want to appreciate you. It was quite for that. Uh, Jonathan, when do we explain something oh, like I can't uh, hear you. I think it's cut enough. Yeah, there are some points. But uh, my network, my network. Yeah, I still can't hear you. Are you asking questions or are you commenting? I... Internet. Okay. Uh, uh, I can hear you, but it's uh, still breaking. Uh, my, my you, can, you can text if you want to type it. You can text it on the chat box. And if you have a question, All right. yes, so just because application. yes, because I can't I hear you. Because your know, teaching that was quite great, and I really appreciate it. Just like the point we explain on my network of, and I think that we will get it. 
Yeah, the video will be uh, you the video will be available on the YouTube. The video will be available and also our president will post it on the WhatsApp group later. So any other comment? Any other question? Okay. I believe that I have done uh, as much as I can do because I'm also a scholar. I'm also a learner. I'm also learning as you are learning. Because imagine I've, I've done this kind of uh, topic when I was in school. Uh, when I was in university, that was about 15 years ago. So, uh, Dr. Lonson, <laughs> Tom, challenged me that I have to come back and teach on this. <laughs> so, I believe I've done as much. I have to research. I have to read other books. I have to, you know, research other things so that I can come and deliver and so that I don't um, dis disappoint anyone. So, I believe that... Uh, You've understood, and even if you have to ask questions later, you can put it on the chat box. I believe our president will be able to answer because he is also an expert in this particular um particular program, this particular subject. Because I've also been learning from the WhatsApp as well on the group. So, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for all your activities that you've been and learning great stuff from PCCF. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to hand over to Dr. Lonsington. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, indeed, I am overwhelmed with joy. And I am so much glad that those attending this class tonight even though I know some of our friends joined this class late, but the short while that they have joined, I have noticed well that they have taken something home as something is very, very important in procurement industry. Thank you so much, Ma. We will never be ungrateful. Please, I want to seize this opportunity to appeal to us. And uh, just like I said earlier on our self platform, that tonight that we will not be able to meet on the WhatsApp section. But tomorrow, Sunday, because the class is Saturday and Sunday is inclusive. Initially, we normally do Monday to Friday, Monday to Friday, but we decided to include Saturday, Sunday. So the class will end officially on Wednesday the next week. But on Monday, we are going to release certificate to those that have requested for it. So please, if you are interested, which I know, you can't go to farm without going with tools. You have to go with things that will enable you to wheat and to do well. One thing is sure, to come to the class, acquire wisdom, acquire knowledge. The other one is the evidence of that which you attended. So please, we appeal that you should make a request of your certificate the money is not much because if you do a research and check, you will know what procurement is all about. But you are free to make two times payment. It's accepted. We understand how the country is. So all the same, tomorrow evening, we are going to meet by 8 p.m. Nigerian time, 8 p.m. On Monday, the same thing. Tuesday, the same thing. Wednesday, the same thing. We call it off for the day before we now dive into another section. God bless you. God bless you. Good night, everyone. Have a instant night rest. Thank you. Thank you so much. And God bless you all. Have a wonderful, uh, peaceful night. And also have a great Sunday tomorrow. God bless. Bye-bye.